What is up guys? Justin here, Jekyll and Hyde Athletics, jhathletics.com, and today we're going to talk about the Log Queen Impress. So as you guys can see, I'm here in the gym, uh, Jiu-Jitsu and Strength Academy in Cromwell, Connecticut. And as you can also see, I, I shaved my beard. I'm not sure how I feel about that. I can't, I'm, you know, I've been debating if I'm still a man or not. Sources say no, but we'll see. Um, so anyways, we're going to do, like I said, log clean and press today. Um, log is a, definitely a very interesting implement to use. Um, a lot of people think that it's more brute strength than anything. There's actually a lot of technique that goes into cleaning and pressing a log. It's completely different than any kind of uh, other implement as far as barbell or anything else. So if you're used to... Uh, barbell clean and press, uh, like a clean and jerk or Olympic lifting or something like that. This is going to be completely different uh, than that. You're actually going to be able to use the shape and diameter of the log to help you with the clean. It's not a explosive clean. It's more of like rolling a log up your body, um, which I'll go over obviously in the video. Um, and it's just it's just cool. It looks fucking cool, uh, especially if you have you know sweet wood log. Uh, looks like you're pressing a fucking telephone pole overhead, which who doesn't like that? It'd be fun. You know, fun shit is always fun. Fun shit is always fun. That's very smart. Um, so anyways, let's get uh, get into it. I'll show you. I'm going to show you how I set up from, you know, foot position, hand position at the start to all the way through to a push press, jerk, uh, whatever you're doing, strict press. So let's get into it. Let's lift some logs. Let's have some fun. Some have some fun. Have some fun. Better. Alright guys, so uh, before we start, let's talk footwear. So with a log or anything else where you need a stable base, I suggest something with a hard sole. I personally use um, these Adidas weightlifting shoes. These are, I think they're the Powerlift 2. I've had them for like seven years or so. Um, as you can see, they have a slight heel on them. They're not super crazy as far as heel-wise. Uh, definitely a little bit less than a you know traditional weightlifting shoe. Um, but the solid sole is what you really want. So if if these don't work for you, these work for me personally. I really like uh, how I feel, and these feel very stable. And with my pressing style, which is uh, definitely like a power jerk, um, I feel like these work much better for me. I've tried you know several different shoes over the last ten plus years of strongman. So um, try them out if you can. If not, uh, something flat with a solid sole that's not like super squishy. You don't want like a basketball shoe or, or something like that. You, like an indoor soccer shoe, the Sambas, those work really well. Um, or just, you know, your Converse flat sole shoes. Um, something that you want something that's hard and stable that's not going to give as you kind of dip and drive into your press. So that's number one. Good shoes. All right, guys, let's talk uh, foot position. So as you can see here, my feet are just inside of the handles. Um, this is a little bit wider stance than I would take like on my uh, deadlift or uh, you know some kind of pull from the ground. I just find that it's easier on the log to be just slightly inside of the handle. Okay, you don't want to be like way out here. You got to still be inside the handle. Um, it's going to give you good power off the ground and uh, I feel it's more, more stable once you get up to uh, rack position so you don't you don't have to move your feet from there um, as you can see too my feet are pretty close I try to get them underneath the log as we can see this here a little bit underneath there and then pretty close so that when I get kind of down into position here like this my shins are right against the log as I bend my knees a little bit and get my hips down so you want your feet like I said just inside of the handles and your uh, shins, I would say about two inches or so from the log, um, so that it gives you a little bit of room to uh, get down to it and get into a good position. All right, guys, so we got our feet in the right spot. We're close enough to the log, so when we come down to grab the handles, our shins are gonna be right against it. Now from here, you can see how the log is kind of sitting flat. What I like to do is roll the log forward, okay? So what I like to tell people is kind of point your, think about pointing your thumbs at the ground, okay? 
Hi guys, so we'll go uh, side view on this so you guys can see what I'm talking about on the, uh, you know, cocking your wrist forward, uh, thumbs of the ground, elbows high on the lap. So deep position, hands. Um, also, I like to, I didn't mention before, I pretty much grab right in the center of the handles. I know some people prefer to grab in the front, or prefer to grab in the back. It's going to depend on, um, you know, how you press. If you grab more forward, it's going to be, the lug's going to be more out front. If you grab more back, the lug's going to be tilted up a little bit more. So I, I pretty much recommend grabbing right in the center. So anyways, <coughs> let's, uh, let's take a look at the lap position. Okay. So if you don't cock a lock forward, say you just start here, what's going to happen is when you come up to your lap, you're going to be in this position. Okay. Now, as you can see, I don't really have a lot of torque, a lot of uh, elbow room. The log is kind of sitting way out on my knees, okay, and I'm kind of like almost upright. Um, that is not going to allow you to use your hip power to actually roll the log up. Now, because of the diameter of this, we're going to use that to our advantage, actually. We're going to be able to use that circumference. We're going to push the forearms into the back of the log as we're standing up and throwing the elbows forward and the hips forward. That's going to help the log roll up our body. So it's not like a two-part clean, like a you know, clean and jerk for Olympic lifting. It's more of a, like I said, it's more smooth motion. So it's not a, a jerk, as you'll see when I do the whole thing. So let's just look at correct lap position. So we start here. Hands are going to come down. Okay, and as we come up, we keep that position and keep those elbows nice and high and sit down with the lock. Okay, so see the difference here? See how my elbows are super high? Um, this is going to give us a lot more, you can already tell, it gives us a lot more torque on the lock and it's going to make the clean a lot easier. All right, guys, so one other thing um, on the lap position obviously, you're going to want to be pulling that log into your, to your body as hard as you can. Uh, really rowing it into your, you know, it's chest, belly area. You kind of want to get it on top of your, you want to be able to feel it in this area when you're sitting down with it, with the elbows high. Um, I was, and like I said, pulling in, uh, upper back is very important on log and any other kind of pressing, um, just to really keep a stable base, especially when you get to your rack position. If your back isn't strong, what's going to happen is your elbows are going to come down, and with the log, it's going to come way out in front, uh, which is not what we want. So, um, so we got to the lap, now we're going to tackle uh, cleaning from the lap up to rack position on your shoulders. So we got the log from the ground to our lap, elbows are nice and high, hands are pointed down a little bit. Now we're going to go from that position up into the rack position. So one thing I see a lot, uh, that's, I actually did a little picture on this uh, on my Instagram, JH Athletics. Um, People end up with the log here, elbows down, and your head looking straight forward. Um, what that's going to do is, it, it, as you can see, it kind of, you'll see it better when I get the log. I'm going to do the wrong position first and then the correct position. So if you're here with your head forward, you're going to end up pressing out in front. Because of the di diameter of the log, the lower your elbows are, the farther away from your center of gravity the log is going to be, which is going to force you to kind of press this way, especially once the log gets a lot heavier. Um, with a lighter log, you might be able to get away with keeping your elbows down and, you know, pressing out in front and kind of saving it a little bit back over your head. But as the weights get heavier, it's just going to come farther and farther down and that eventually you're not even going to be able to hold it in the, the rack position at all. So let's uh, do what you shouldn't do first. Do not do this. So I'll put a little, like a red X here or something. Um, so this will be an incorrect position. You can kind of see, you'll be able to see how far away the log is from my center of gravity, okay? So they're going to do the bottom part correctly, but I don't think you can see that in the video anyways. So here we go, up, and then from here, hips forward, explode, but see how low my elbows are low, and my head is forward, okay? So when I go to press, it's going to come forward. So that's not what you want, obviously. Um, normally, you know, you want your, you don't want to crank your neck on exercises, you know. This is one thing that you're going to have to. So 
what you want to do, the correct way to get the log as close to your center of gravity right over your hips as possible is to kind of crank your neck out of the way and really throw your elbows up, keep them up as high as possible. And the only way to do that because of the angular log is to kind of look at the ceiling or the sky, wherever you are, if you're outside. Um, so the other thing too is when you're, when you're in the lap position, what you're really thinking about is, you know, exploding forward with your hips, obviously. You're pushing almost down with your forearms and trying to throw your, think about throwing your elbows forward. That's gonna help drive the log and roll it up your, uh, up your chest into the rack position. So like I said, you're not kind of like exploding from there. The log is just, it's too big a diameter to kind of explode off your hip and get to a clean position. Some people might be able to do it. Um, you probably could do it with lighter weights, but once you start getting heavier, that's, it's just not gonna work. This puts a lot of stress on your bicep. It's just, it's not a really good technique for this particular implement. So let's do a correct rack position and you can kind of see the difference. So as you can see here, it's kind of hard to talk like this. Um, Okay. So, as you can see, I just, it's really hard to talk like that. Anyways, um, so as you can see, head is back, elbows up really, really high, upper back nice and tight, kind of flaring your lats out a little bit, um, and getting your chin out of the way of the log. That's going to put you in a much better position. The log is going to be right over your center of gravity and you're not gonna end up pushing out. As long as you keep this position when you dip, see how my elbows don't go down? If you come like this and kind of your upper back rounds over and your elbows come down, then you're gonna end up in that, as you can see, you're kind of in that same position that we were in the first one where the log is gonna go out from. So, upper back training, face pulls, rows, shrugs, all that stuff is very important for the log to hold that position with your back to keep that good rack position and make sure that your elbows don't fall down as you're going to press. So next portion we're going to go over is the press. We'll move the camera and we'll get to it. All right, so pressing options. Obviously we have strict press, push press, and then jerk. Okay, I prefer most of my training I do Actually, I've just switched over to doing more push press. I was doing like completely jerks all the time for a long time. And I just found that it didn't, didn't really build as much strength as doing a push press and actually using a little bit of shoulders. So what I've been doing is mostly push press with some strict press assist, assist, assistance stuff. And then uh, once in a while, if I'm doing something super heavy, I'll go back to my jerks and I find that um, doing it that way, my jerk is actually much better than it was before, so I feel like push press is probably the most efficient way to get stronger uh, on the pressing. So what we want to think about on push press, okay, your feet are in position, elbows are nice and high, head out of the way. Um, I see a lot of people end up going like this, okay, so you're here and you're kind of coming forward with your hips, okay, you're losing all that hip power instead of going straight up and down. So what you want to think about is kind of from here, push your knees out almost so your hips come straight up and down and stay underneath the log, okay? So knees out instead of knees forward. As you can see, my hips kind of move forward. Also, in this position, with heavy weight on your chest, it's going to put a lot of pressure and strain on your low back, which is not good. So it's not very safe position either um, coming forward with your knees. So you really want to think about it as like the top of a squat as you would kind of bring your knees out and your hips stay right under the log. Okay. So we're going to do, I'm going to do uh, push press first and then uh, I'll do a jerk too. I'll just do one clean and then push press so as you can see what it looks like. And I'll probably do it from the front too so you can see. So side, like I said, your, your hips should stay 
directly under your shoulders, okay, instead of coming forward. So let's do one push press. So with the push press, as you saw, you're coming down and then pressing through. Okay, it's not like a jerk where you're kind of jumping under. Um, like I said, that involves a lot more shoulder. Um, the jerk is more uh, explosive and you're almost like catch it, trying to catch the, the log at lockout, just like you would on a, a jerk with a, a regular barbell. Like I said, I prefer a push press for training, just for strength. I think it has more strength benefit than doing jerks all the time. Obviously, if you do jerk in competition, um, you want to do it at least you know enough to keep the technique fresh. So this one will be a jerk, and then I'm gonna I'll do one of each from the front view, so you guys can kind of see how that looks as well. So as you can see, that is obviously much faster. Um, and it's, like I said, it's kind of like dropping under and catching. Um, what I didn't mention is obviously you want to get good breath while you're on the chest. Some people won't, might not be able to do that. I, I don't really find that I have a problem personally with getting a good breath of air with the log on my chest. I don't know if I'm just used to the, you know, the weight of the log being on my chest, but if you have to get your air at the bottom, um, that's fine as well. You're going to have to get used to holding that breath all the way up. Um, I would suggest trying to do it the other way. As you can kind of see when I, when I do it too, I kind of breathe to get it to here. Take another breath, breathe, and then third breath is the press. Um, so you can get kind of get a rhythm down if you're doing reps with it. And uh, yeah, I think that's that's good. Let's do uh, we'll do one from front view as well. One of each push press and then jerk. All right, guys, so that's it for uh, this log video. Hope, uh, hope it was helpful, got something out of it. Um, if you're interested in more, uh, click the links below. I offer you know, personal coaching. You can check out my Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff is down in the description. Um, if you don't have a log, I also have uh, another video on how to do the log press without a log. I'll put a card to that up here. Um, and yeah, that's it, guys. So. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be doing uh, a lot more of these. Hopefully next week will be stones. Um, until then, have a plan, have a purpose, and always be the hardest worker in a room. See you guys.